I am Hilal Ahmed Dar, LSU scholar in the Department of Linguistics, University of Kashmir. I have with me Professor Ijaz Mahmoud Sheikh. He is a professor in the Department of Linguistics, University of Kashmir. The title of my paper is Morphological Analysis of Gedi Language. The speech community is uh, settled in the upper belt of uh, upper belt and some neighboring areas of Bhadrawat, Asil, of District Dora, of Juman Kashmir. Uh, some speakers of Gedi language are also settled in Udampur, Bengi, and Kutfa areas of Jumu region. Frederick Drew has talked about Gedi community in his book, The Jumu and Kashmir Territory. Territory is a geographical account. He says that the southeast end of Bhadrawat border with the Chamba country and the Giddies live in Budrava seems to have migrated at some time or other through Chamba hills. They are Hindus and have the same subdivisions of caste as the others. The word Gaddi uh, meaning shepherd is derived from the Sanskrit word Gadar, which means sheep. Gadi is a semi pastoral and semi cultivating tribe. Originally, Gadi belonged to Chamba region, but with the passage of time, some of them migrated to Badrava area. The reason for their migration as uh, migration of many, but as claimed by some of the speakers of Gadi language, the harsh winters and the operation of, operation of Mughal emperors are said to be the main reasons for their migration. There are as many as 15 villages in Badrava. Four in Kufa, uh, four in Dozampur, and two villages are in Kishtwad, where Gedi speakers are found. The overall population of Gedi in uh, India are, uh, as per the census of 2011, are 1,81,000. Out of the, uh, those 1,81,000, 46,400 uh, are uh, settled in Jammu region. The classification of Gedi language Gedi uh, belongs to an Indo Aryan language family. Uh, T. Graham Bailey in 1907 has classified Gidi as a language of Western party group of Indo Aryan language in his book, The Languages of Northern Himalayas. The word, the word Pahari applies to the group of languages spoken in the sub Himalayan hills extending from Budrava to the eastern part of Nepal. Now, moving to the morphology part of uh, my paper. In morphology part, I will be talking about uh, briefly talking about word formation processes, uh, normal morphology, and Word morphology. In, uh, there are uh, various word formation processes in Gedi uh, language. Some of the, these are, some of them are mentioned in this here. Uh, first one is affixation. The process of adding a new part to the beginning or end of the word is called affixation. The part added to the beginning is called prefixation, and if it is uh, added to the end of a word, then it is suffixation. Examples of uh, prefixation in Gedi are. Uh, Pasan becomes na pasan. Na is uh, added as a prefix and it becomes uh, na pasan. Uh, pasan means like, it is supposed it is uh, na pasan, that is like. Similarly, in the word kanuni, uh, uh, prefix is gair is added to it, it becomes gair kanuni. Uh, in the word zimedar, zimed, uh, gair is added to it, uh, gair, gair is added as a prefix and it becomes gair zimedar. Uh, uh, similarly, in the word sakmu, that's able, uh, na is added to, uh, it is, uh, to it is front end because na sakmu, uh, which becomes unable. Some examples of uh, suffixation are like lakdi, which means wood, uh, hara is added to it, it becomes lakadhara, which, mean, uh, which becomes woodcutter. Similarly, asman, which means sky, e is added to as a suffix and it becomes asmani becomes sky blue. Likhna, uh, in Likhna, wa is added as a suffix and it becomes Likhna wa, which means writer. Sharab, which means alcohol, e is added as a suffix and it becomes sharabi. Some examples of compounding are uh, like pit, peed, pit is, means bag, peed means egg and it becomes pit peed, that is bag egg. Tela dabe. Tela means matchstick. Uh, dabe means box, and it becomes tela dabe matchbox. Uh, dia da, dia dada. Dia means day. Dada means light, and it becomes uh, dia dada. That is daylight. Resham ki, uh, resham kida. Resham means silk, and kida means worm. Uh, it becomes resham kida, which is which means silk worm. Mung plus phali. Mung is means pea. Phali means nut, and it becomes mung phali. That is peanut. Among the uh, nominal morphology of Gedi language, nouns in Gedi are described on the basis of gender, number, and case. Uh, gender. Nouns in Gedi are influenced for two genders, thereby having a classification of male and female. Change of gender in Gedi involves 
replacing sounds and adding suffixes to the stem, uh, zero modification and suppletion. Examples are in Gedi language suffix ni or uh, e, ni e and an are added to the word to change the gender. Vowel o is replaced by e to form a feminine form. Vowel o is replaced by e to change the gender. Examples are in examples are as follows. In the word hati, which means elephant, uh, ni is added it becomes hati ni, that is uh, female elephant. Uh, similarly, kukad. Kukad means uh, cock. Uh, it becomes kukdi means hen. So in the word samadhi, an is added it becomes samadhi. Samadhi means daughter-in-law's father and samadhi means daughter-in-law's mother. Similarly, we have one more example, lada, which means husband and it becomes ladi, which means wife. Some examples of zero modification are share uh, remains share as both uh, male and female. Mirgo uh, remains same in both male and female, and me means buffalo. It, it also remains same in both male and female. The examples of supposition are manu becomes trinth. Manu means man, and trinth becomes trinth means uh, woman. Uh, shaura and shashu. Shaura means father-in-law, and shashu means mother-in-law. Bapu and Amma, Bapu means father and Amma means mother. As Dan, Dan means bull and Ga means cow. Uh, these are examples of suppletion. In number, number is a grammatical category of nouns and pronouns. Nouns in uh, Gadi are marked for two numbers as singular and plural. Plural forms are generated by singular, uh, form generated from singular by emitting, adding, or replacing sounds as shown below given examples. Uh, Bacha becomes Bache. In this example, vowel A uh, is omitted and A uh, is added at the final position of singular to form the plural. Kitab becomes Kitaba. Vowel A uh, uh, is added at the final position of the singular to form the plural. Kishwa becomes Kishwe. Tota becomes Tote. In the uh, example, vowel A uh, is replaced by A as the final position of singular to form the plural. Similarly, Mirg become, becomes Mirgum. In this example, nu is added as a fixed at the final position to form a pillar of uh, milk. Now, in the case, there are various cases found in uh, Gedi language. Some of these are here in the, uh, I am discussing some of these cases here in this presentation. First one is nominative case. Nominative case is covertly represented in Gedi. It has no phonological representation. Some examples of uh, nominative case are a kitab pada, parda. Which means I read a book. In uh, this example, nominative case is uh, how, but it has no phonological representation. Similarly, in second example, kutur goguta. Kutur means dog, and it remains same. Uh, no phonological representation for nominative case in this example as well. Accusative case in uh, in the uh, examples uh, in the below given examples. Uh, in first example, or is added, while as in uh, second example, no. It is covertly represented. No uh, phonological representation is there in this second. In the second example, the examples are as godor charnu. In this example, or is added to god horse, which means horse, and it becomes godor. And in second example, so kitab parda. No phonological representation is for uh, accusative case marker in this example. Urgetu case. The Urgetu case marker is represented by ni in Gedi language. Urgetu is uh, usually demonstrated in perfect aspect only, uh, which means it's a, uh, there is separate ergativity in this Gedi language. Examples are Tani, Chidi, Herore. Te uh, means he, ni is added as a Urgetu marker. Any, Chidi, Herore, a means it, uh, ni is added, added as a Urgetu marker. In ablative case, tha is added as a case marker. Some examples are so dari tha lokdo. Uh, in this example, tha is added to dari. Dari means window and tha is ablative case marker. Pataru buta tha lokde. In this example, buta uh, buta means tree and tha is added as a uh, as an ablative case marker. Day to day to cases represented by markers. Uh, it can be over, overly represented or overly represented in Gedi language. Uh, in overly represented examples, a is added to uh, the noun, uh, like we have example, te me pena dita. In this example, pen means pen, pen and a is added as a day to case marker. Yeah, um, sorry, 
in this example, may is a day two, may is, a, may is an indirect object and day two case is assigned, but there is no phonological representation. In second example, Rami Shami Kitaba Jita, day two case marker is assigned to Sham and a is added as a day two case marker. Uh, in you have five minutes more. Genitive case. Genitive case is represented by adding marker ara to the position now of the sentence. Example is ar. Ye Rahul ara pen hai. In this example, ara is added to Rahul as a genitive case marker. In second example, wo Sindeep ara gar hai. In this example, ara is added to Sindeep as a genitive case marker. Instrumental case. Instrumental case is expressed by adding suffixes, uh, adding suffixes a, u, and in to the concerned nouns. Like for example, mere pena se lika. In this example, uh, a is added to pen. That's instrumental case marker. So in second example, boat kurha do se badinda. In this example, do is added to kurha. That's x. That means x. Uh, in this third example, Baal Kenchin se Badinda. In this example, Na is added to Kenchi as an instrumental case marker. Locative case. Locative case is represented by A R O markers in Gedi language. Example is so gara so gara hai. Gar means south and A is added as a locative case marker. Kitab meza mezo thi thi ya. In this example, uh, O is added as a locative case marker to the word maze, which means table. I mean, uh, moving to the word morphology, uh, it deals with the classification of verbs in a language on the basis of their inflections. Verbs in language are inflected for tense, aspect, and mood. The verb morphology of Gedi is discussed below tense. The markers which are added to express present tense in Gedi language are na, te, then, din, and dia. The markers are Changed on the basis of gender, you know, like they changed into dia and then changed into deen when the gender uh, of the subject is changed. Examples are au bazara ganna. In this example, na is added to uh, the verb gan, which means go. And for plural, it is au bazare, uh, au bazare ganna. It means same. In second person, uh, we have example tu bazare gande, uh, and uh, plural is to say bazare gande. Uh, for third person, so bazare gande, which becomes so bazare gandhen. In this uh, example, then is added as a uh, present tense marker. Past tense. Past tense is represented by the markers uh, rathu, rathi, and rathi added to the verb of Gedi language. For example, au bazare gachu rathu, uh, and in plural, it is as bazare gachu rathi. For second person, tu bazare gachu rathi, uh, it becomes tu bazare gachu rathi. For third person, it is so bazare gachu rathi, it becomes so bazare gachu rathi. Future tense. In future tense, the marker A is added to the verb. Examples are A bazare gana. In this example, A is added as a future tense marker. Uh, as bazare gana. Uh, second person, tu bazare gana. Tu bazare, uh, tus bazare gana. Third person, tas bana, uh, ban gana. Tia ban gana. Aspect. Uh, present pro uh, progressive aspect. The present progressive aspect is marked by adding Rahav and Rore to the verb as in the following examples. Tu chidi hera Rahav, which means you are seeing the bird. Au ire ethu Rore, I am coming here. Past progressive or imperfect aspect. The past progressive aspect is marked by adding Rothu or BOT to the verb. Some of, some of the examples are Al Bazare Gachi Rothu, which means I was to the I was going to the market. Az Bazare Gachu Rathi, which means we were going to the market. Perfecto aspect. The perfecto aspect is marked by addition of suffix Rothu and Rathi to the verb, as in the following examples. Al Bazare Chali Gachu Rathu, I had gone to the market. Tu bazare chali gachu rathi, you had gone to the market. Present perfecto aspect. The present perfecto aspect in Gedi language is expressed by suffix uro, uro and, or uren. That is added to the verb. Examples are 
आउ बाजारे चली गो विच मीन्स आई हैव गॉन टू द मार्केट आज बाजारे चली गो वी हैव गॉन टू द मार्केट इंडिकेटिव मोड रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय अनूर एंड ओ इन दी लैंग्वेज इंपरेटिव मोड इज कोवर्टली रिप्रेजेंटेड नो फोनोलॉजिकल रिप्रेजेंटेशन सब्जेक्टिव मोड इज रिप्रेजेंट बाय थाई एंड यो डेबिटेटिव मोड इज रिप्रेजेंट बाय सखनू एंड सखदा obligatory mode is represented by lodi uh, now moving to the conclusion the present paper attempts to, to document the morphology of gidi language spoken in different parts of jammu region majority of speakers are settled in the upper belt of bhadrawa region gidi uh, people have been migrated have migrated from himachal pradesh they have been settled in the area since trinity years during all these years they have not given up their traditional occupation and are still known for their pastoral lifestyle the overall population of gidi in jammu kashmir is 46400 as per the census of 2011 gidi language has been listed as a definitely endangered language as such the study and documentation of this uh, of this language is badly needed which has not been undertaken till date given this backdrop the present study is an humble attempt to, to analyze and document the morphology of the language in this paper a brief introduction about the community is given in morphology part different word formation processes like affixation and compounding are given in the in this paper the normal morphology and verb morphology of the language is also discussed in detail it is hoped that this paper will lay foundation of descriptive analysis of language and help in providing the basis for further research on the language thank you